Okay, it's, yeah, it's my honor to be here. So um, the topic of the talk is practical criminal analysis of JSON Web Token and Galois account remote implementations. So I'm a soft, uh, secure engineer. So basically, uh, my job is conduct security reviews. What it means is to play the attacker roles in your academic papers. Um, so we are talking about two topics. Uh, the first one is JSON uh, Web Signature Security Review. And I, I will show you how tricky and complicated design can lead to unsafe implementation. Uh, the second topic is uh, kind of a low level primitive. Uh, Gawa counter mode, it's widely used, it's used almost everywhere, um, but then it's uh, implementation are rarely checked. And then I will show you um, two other uh, type bugs that might leak uh, authentication key. So um, basically, there is no zero day today. All the bugs were reported upstream uh, and have been fixed. Uh, a year ago, or some, some of the bugs were recently fixed. So before we start, the, the, the most important lesson that I've learned uh, over the years is uh, the encryption input is mostly under our control. Why the decryption of signature verification input is always under attack and control. And then we will use this observation over and over again uh, to uh, show how to exploit uh, crypto bugs. So JSON, uh, JSON Web Token is basically just a JSON uh, token, but it provides signatures or maybe multiple signatures. It has ECDH, uh, CBC, HMARC encryptions. It has different formats. The format that we'll focus on today is very simple. It has a header, a payload, and signatures. And then, in particular, I will talk about Square uh, Go Jose implementation, which is widely used by Google, Let's Encrypt, and uh, Square Inc. Okay, so when I started, I have no idea what uh, JSON Web Token is. So I just uh, uh, read the RFC, and this, this, this uh, line uh, really triggered me because uh, it says that uh, in the signatures, you embed the public key correspond to the signatures. Uh, so basically what it means that a attacker can generate a private uh, a public key pair and then send the public key together with the signature with the hope that the receiver will extract the public key out and use that for signature verification. This is the design level mistake by IFC, and let's see uh, how uh, it leads to unsafe implementation. Uh, sorry. So uh, Go Jose enable that feature by default. So any signatures have uh, the public key embedded in it by default. Uh, so just for fun, instead of trying the public key, I try to send the HMAC key, and it, uh, it, it also accepted. I don't even know what it means uh, when you have a HMAC key together with the HMAC. Um, <laughs> so the next uh, problem is I look at the ECDH uh, implementation in Go Jose, and then you know like the first step is to check well-known attack, uh, invalid curve attack, and then for elliptic curve, a NIST curve, you have to check whether the public key is on your curve. Otherwise, the attacker can send you a public key on a different curve with a small order, and then it can use Chinese remainder theorem to extract the private key and then uh, Go Jose doesn't have any check. Uh, one of the reason is uh, Go implementation doesn't have ECDH. So the, the developer has to do it themselves and you can guess that they miss the, this critical check. Uh, Go Jose also have uh, CBC HMAC. The HMAC uh, is computed over the AAD, nonce, and ciphertext. And the last, uh, pay attention to the last component. The last component actually uh, makes the boundary between AAD and nonce unambiguous. And then uh, I found a few integer of flow, but then I want to exploit it. I don't know how to turn integer of flow in Go into remote code execution, but how about HMAC bypass? So the idea is uh, you, want to, uh, you want to shift the boundary between AAD and nonce. So assuming an attacker observes some uh, 16 by AAD, some nonce, and then some large ciphertext, what attacker can do is it will create a new set of AAD where if, if you pay attention because of AAD uh, size is too big, when you multiply by eight, it will be 64 because of integer of flow. So basically, the main idea is the attacker already create a new set of AAD, new nonce, new ciphertext, and then the HMAC is the same. Uh, so basically, causing uh, HMAC authentication bypass. Uh, the last topic in Go Jose is, is support multiple signatures. 
I, I rarely seen a, a real practical use case that actually use multiple signatures, but then it, it's in our RFC, so uh, the developer has to develop it. So if you look at uh, the signature verification, um, the, it checks whether one of the signatures is invalid, then the method just returns the payload. And what's wrong with that? Uh, the problem is uh, the signatures not, uh, not only covers the payload, but also uh, the protected header, integrity of the header. So what the attacker can do is, is assuming that observe a valid signatures and a valid header and valid payload, what it does is it creates a new uh, invalid header and invalid signature, and then it will send them together with the valid one. Now the victim called a verify method, it checks whether one of the signatures is valid, while well, the second signature is valid because it's what the attacker observed on the wire, so the, so the victim will um, wrongly assume that the first, uh, the first header is valid, which may contain uh, the revocation key. Okay, so let's move on to Gawa counter mode. Uh, this is kind of a primitive, low primitive, um, that's a, that I, I also uh, do a security uh, review for. So Gawa counter mode is kind of fragile. There are a few uh, attack in academic, but like uh, when I first look at it, it seems that like people rarely look at its implementation. So for a recap, the Gawa counter mode has an encryption key and authentication key. The encryption is basically just counter mode, but the counter is actually increase every time modular two to the thirty two. Uh, this is important, and then we'll come back to it later. Uh, the authentication tag is basically, if you look at the last equation, forget everything, it's just a polynomial of uh, authentication key where the coefficient is the ciphertext. Okay. Um, so basically, I look at one of the open source cell wrapper because uh, we now don't want people to use open source cell directly. So we write open source cell wrapper, someone wrote it. You know, the say open source cell allows you to configure what is the expected length of the authentication tag. So the, sa the safe one is you say, hey, I want only 16 bytes of authentic authentication tag, or maybe 12 bytes, depends on the applications. But what the wrapper does is it gets the authentication tag that it receives on the wire and uses to configure the expected length of the authentication tag. So what it means is the attacker just uh, send one byte. Um, authentication tag, then the, the wrapper will happily accept it. You may wonder why uh, does an attacker just send zero byte? Well, basically, OpenSSL just pre prevents zero byte authentication tag. So one byte works nicely. Um, another problem is, uh, as I said before, the counter mode actually uh, work in modular 2 to 32. So if uh, after 2 to 32 blocks, the counter will be wrapped around ca causing counter collisions. And in counter mode, if you, ha if you have counter collision, then you leak plan text. And in GCM, if you have counter collision, you also leak the authentication key. Um, so th this issue is different from the IV review issue because it happens even if users use a different IVs. And then uh, let's make, uh, I make uh, a check for open source cell conscript and then Bowsey Cancer and OpenJDK A miss this criti critical check, and then it's especially dangerous in Java Cypher because it uses streaming API, meaning you can encrypt last five by calling uh, encrypt each chunk. Okay, the last bug that I will talk about is the classic timing vulnerability in OpenJDK. So if you look at this, it looks similar to the HMAC vulnerability. Basically, it compares byte by byte, and if you see the first uh, unmatch, then it will throw an exception, okay? So, okay, basically it allows you to uh, bypass authentication once for particular ciphertext, but I want more, I want authentication key. So, uh, let's remind up about Anton Zhu forbidden IV attack. Uh, thi this works on encryption input under user control only, and then it's not exploitable uh, in practice, and basically this already fixes in 2007. But I remind, uh, remind us that decryption input is under attacker control. So let's see how it can be exploited. So the attacker choose collided IVs in decryption. Basically, the attacker send two pairs. The first pair is IV in C1, the second pair is IV in C2, 
and then C1 XOR C2 is one. In particular, you just choose a very simple, uh, simple payload, IV E0, C1 E0, and C2 is one. And use, using the timing attack, the attacker can learn the authentication tag of these pair. So I write that equation for you. So basically what it means is if you XOR the authentication tag uh, together, then you have H square. And then finding a square root in, uh, in well of field is enough to find uh, phi H. So basically what it means is if you just make a small mistake uh, similar to H mark one, then you basically lick the authentication key. Uh, I have an extra block, but uh, probably it's better for uh, uh, questions. Thanks for your attention. Okay, any questions for Kwan? I guess not. Well, I guess you're going to be around, so if you want to talk to him in the coffee break, you can do. Uh, let's thank Kwan one more time. Thank you. Thank you.